Science and scientific advancements in the last 100 years or so have undeniably made a huge difference to the lives of many people. These advancements have been useful and made the world a more open and connected place. Television, mobile phones, the internet, gaming and many other ideas and inventions have improved the lives of millions of people around the world. Science is considered by many to be the primary reason that mankind can achieve its highest and most remarkable feats. But for how long has science and scientific knowledge already started to work against mankind? We all know that these scientific advancements have led to a huge surge in slave labour, corporate exploitation and thievery. It's a price that many people are willing to overlook and accept in the name of science. But could science now be leading to something even darker and more dangerous than slavery, corporate exploitation and thievery? Is modern day science going to end up disconnecting the same people that it once connected? Is modern day science and new scientific advancements one day going to be used against mankind? We are already monitored on a daily basis. Over the last 10 years, internet surveillance has become much more prevalent, normalised and accepted. Same as internet censorship. Is this just the tip of the iceberg? And when will science cross the line and turn from something useful into something dangerous? Many people believe it already has. In the year 1818, Mary Shelley writes the famous novel Frankenstein. This is the story of an obsessed scientist that devoted much of his life creating a living human. In the novel, Victor Frankenstein builds a creature in his laboratory through an ambiguous method consisting of chemistry and alchemy. The monster is described as 8 foot tall, hideously ugly but sensitive and emotional. The monster attempts to fit into human society but is shunned which leads him to seek revenge against his creator, Victor Frankenstein. When Victor sees and realises what he has created, he is filled with regret and disgusted by his creation, who calls himself the Adam of your labours. He refers to the monster as the creature, the spectre, the demon, the wretch, the devil, thing, being and ogre. The monster kills Victor's younger brother, William, upon learning of the boy's relation to his hated creator. When Frankenstein retreats to the mountains, the monster approaches him at the summit and asks the creator to build a female mate. In return he promises to disappear with his mate and never trouble mankind or Victor again. The monster then threatens to destroy everything Frankenstein holds dear should he fail. Frankenstein agrees to build a female creature but at the possibility of creating a race of monsters he destroys the experiment. In response the monster kills Frankenstein's best friend and later kills Frankenstein's bride on the wedding night. Searching for the monster in the Arctic Circle Frankenstein falls into freezing water contracting severe pneumonia. A ship exploring the region encounters the dying Frankenstein who relates his story to the ship's captain. Later the monster boards the ship but upon finding Frankenstein is dead he is overcome by grief and pledges to inseminate himself at the northernmost extremity of the globe. He then departs never to be seen again. This is a classic fictional tale of how science can quickly turn bad and out of control due to the work of a single scientist. Many claim that modern day science has already crossed the line, 
numerous times in the past, science has led to cruelty. Animals are regularly subjected to insanely cruel experiments in the name of progress as science used animals to observe things like diseases, chemical reactions and medicine. Over the years, most people have come to accept animal testing as a necessity, but animals are not the only victim of cruelty in the name of science. Time after time, humans have also been used as scientific subjects, many times against their will or knowing. In 1951, American dermatologist Albert Kligman reported to work at Pennsylvania's Harmsburg prison to study ringworm. Kligman eventually expanded his research into live drug trials. In these trials he began exposing prison inmates with dioxin. Dioxin was the active ingredient in Agent Orange. Chemical used in the United States herbicidal warfare program in Vietnam. Over a 23 year period, Kligman obtained grants from the US Army, Dow Chemical and Johnson & Johnson, as well as academic support from the University of Pennsylvania to research the effects of dangerous chemicals on unsuspecting prisoners. In the course of 10 years, American forces sprayed nearly 20 million gallons of the chemical Agent Orange Laos and parts of Cambodia in an effort to deprive guerrilla fighters of cover by destroying plants and trees where they could find refuge. Decades after American forces sprayed Agent Orange in South Vietnam, children are still suffering from the side effects of the herbicide. According to the Vietnam Red Cross, about 1 million Vietnamese people have now been affected by Agent Orange, including 150,000 children suffering from birth defects as reported by CNN. Many of the world's leading scientists are known to be intelligent, but are they intelligent enough to make sure that their inventions or ideas do not get into the wrong hands and are not misused? How far is modern day science willing to go? 
Many so-called online conspiracy theorists claim that human cloning is already performed by some sections of science. There are many contrasting stories online about human cloning, from claiming that we are on the verge of new scientific developments edging closer to human cloning, to other reports that claim that human cloning has existed and been used as early as the 1920s and kept top secret. Several European countries, including France, Germany and Switzerland, have banned the creation of cloned human embryos for reproduction or therapeutic purposes. England, Singapore, Sweden, China and Israel allow cloning for research but prohibit it for reproduction. Much ancient art depicts hybrid looking creatures. Some point to this as proof that some ancient cultures could have been much more technologically advanced and maybe even had knowledge on human cloning. In fact, some of the online community believes that human cloning is used heavily in Hollywood and by the super rich. Some people believe that many celebrities have either retired or died only to be cloned in order to carry on selling the product. These theories are sometimes ridiculed despite the fact that they are scientifically plausible. The trouble is, is it's hard and may be impossible to find any real evidence proving the theories right or wrong. Some people that believe in human cloning experiments also believe that pictures and even statues in our history of the ruling elite prove that certain people from our history have been cloned and are living right now. Most people in Britain think of Dolly the Sheep when they think of animal cloning, but Dolly the Sheep was not the first animal to be cloned. Using the same technique, Robert Briggs and Thomas Joseph King cloned a frog in the year 1952. Robert Briggs and Thomas Joseph King were scientists at the Institute for Cancer Research of Lankenu Hospital Research Institute when the work was conducted. Reproduction cloning has many uses. Much of what researchers learn about human disease comes from studying animals such as mice. Often animal models are genetically engineered to carry disease causing mutations in their genes. Creating these transgenic animals is a time intensive process that requires trial and error and several generations of breeding. Cloning could help reduce the time needed to make a transgenic animal model and the result would be a population of genetically identical animals. This is perfect for scientific studies. Using DNA to clone and aid the survival of endangered animals is also regularly considered.
Some supporters of cloning even suggest the possibility of cloning geniuses to help speed up the development of science and technology, which they claim could be very beneficial to mankind. But cloning brings up many potential ethical and social problems and concerns. Some people fear a race of superhumans could result, as well as cloning farms. Grim farms filled with incomplete human clones whose organs could be being harvested for transplantation. The truth about human cloning and how regularly it is used, and even much of the history to it, remains unknown. But the possibility that human cloning could be used by scientists or anybody with the money and the resources is much more realistic than most people are led to believe. Hollywood is not only accused by many online of cloning, but they are also regularly accused of using mind control techniques such as the famous MKUltra. People that believe this point to evidence like extremely high celebrity suicide rates, drug issues and depression they describe as glitches, which is when a celebrity literally goes back to an empty minded state while in the public eye. It is also known that many celebrities suffer from a condition called multiple personality disorder. Britney Spears, Johnny Depp, Serena Williams and an endless list of other celebrities ranging from professional athletes to rappers and actors are said to suffer from multiple personality disorder, sometimes called dissociative identity disorder which is according to some researchers and victims regularly used and sometimes even deliberately triggered when using MK Ultra. This condition causes many celebrities to believe that different personalities are sharing their body with them. Project MK Ultra, sometimes referred to as the CIA's mind control program, is a code name given to a program of experiments on human subjects. The tests were at times illegal and designed and undertaken by the United States Central Intelligence Agency. Wikipedia's MK Ultra page states the operation began in the early 1950s and was originally sanctioned in 1953 and reduced in scope in 1954 in 1967 and officially halted in 1973 the program engaged in many illegal activities including the use of unwitting US and Canadian citizens as its test subjects which led to controversy regarding its legitimacy MKUltra used numerous methods to manipulate people's mental states and alter brain functions, including the surreptitious administration of drugs, especially LSD and other chemicals, hypnosis, sensory deprivation, isolation, verbal and sexual abuse, as well as other forms of psychological torture. The project MK Ultra was broad, with research undertaken at 80 institutions, including 44 colleges and universities, as well as hospitals, prisons, and pharmaceutical companies. The CIA operated through these institutions using front organizations, although some top officials at these institutions were aware of the CIA's involvement. As the US Supreme Court later noted, MKUltra was concerned with the research and development of chemical, biological and radiological materials capable of employment in clandestine operations to control human behaviour.
programme consisted of some 149 sub-projects which the agency contracted out to various universities, research foundations and similar institutions, at least 80 institutions and 185 private researchers participated. Because the agency funded MKUltra indirectly, many of the participating individuals were unaware that they were dealing with the agency. Project MKUltra was first brought to public attention in 1975 by the Church Committee of the US Congress and Gerald Ford Commission to investigate CIA activities within the United States. Investigative efforts were hampered by the fact that CIA Director Richard Helms ordered all MK Ultra files to be destroyed in 1973. The Church Committee and Rockefeller Commission investigations relied upon sworn testimony of the direct participants and the relatively small number of documents that survived. Richard Helms' destruction order. In 1977, a Freedom of Information Act request uncovered a cache of 20,000 documents relating to Project MK Ultra, which led to Senate hearings after the same year. In July 2001, some surviving information regarding MK Ultra was declassified. One 1955 MK Ultra document gives an indication of the size and range of the effort. This document refers to the study of an assortment of mind altering substances described as follows. Substances which will promote illogical thinking, impulsiveness to the point where the receptant. Substances which increase the efficiency of mentation and perception. Materials which will cause the victim to age faster slash slower in maturity. Materials which will promote the intoxicating effect of alcohol. Materials which will produce the signs and symptoms of recognised diseases in a reversible way so that it may be used for malingering, etc. Materials which will cause temporary slash permanent brain damage and loss of memory. Substances that will enhance the ability of individuals to withstand privation, torture and corrosion during interrogation and so-called brainwashing. Materials and physical methods which will produce amnesia for events preceding and during their use. Physical methods of producing shock and confusion over extended periods of time and capable of surreptitious use. Substances which produce physical disablements, such as paralysis of the legs, acute anemia, and etc. Substances which will produce a chemical that can cause blisters. Substances which alter personality structure in such a way that the tendency of the receptant to become more dependent upon another person is enhanced. A material which will cause mental confusion of such of a type that an individual under its influence will find it difficult to maintain a fabrication under questioning. Substances which will lower the ambition and general working efficiency of men when administered in undetectable amounts. Substances which will promote weakness or distortion of eyesight or hearing faculties, preferably without permanent effects. A knockout pill which can be surreptitiously administered in drinks, food, cigarettes and aerosol, etc. which will be safe to use. A material which can be surreptitiously administered by the above routes and which in very small amounts will make it impossible for a person to perform physical activity. During experiments with LSD that began in April 1953 and led to LSD being used regularly, the CIA would experiment and unknowingly administer drugs on mental patients, prisoners, drug addicts, prostitutes, people who could not fight back as 
one agency officer put it. In one case, LSD was administered to a mentor patient in Kentucky for 174 days. The LSD was also administered to CIA employees, military personnel, doctors and other government agencies and members of the general public in order to study their reactions. LSD and other drugs were usually administered without the subject's knowledge. A violation of the Nuremberg Code that the US agreed to follow after World War II. The aim of this was to find drugs which would irresistibly bring out deep confusions or wipe the subject's mind clean and program him or her as they want. They call it a robot agent. As well as mind control, time travel is widely discussed online. And while most people dismiss time travel, it is believed to be taking place by many people online. Time travel would require much more technological advancement than cloning and therefore be much harder to accept or believe. But many physicists do believe time travel is scientifically possible. Whether mankind has managed it or not is up for debate. There are many clips of strange footage online from old movies that seem to be showing people using mobile phones. Most famously the large footed woman seen in the background of an old Charlie Chaplin movie. And somebody that appears to be using a smartphone years before they were invented at a Mike Tyson fight. As well as old photographs and small video clips with futuristic gadgets like mobile phones, some people even claim to have travelled through time themselves. In 1901, when professors Anne Marbley and Eleanor Jourdain were walking the grounds of the Palace of Sai, they claimed to have witnessed Marie Antoinette at a private retreat built for her by her husband Louis XVI. They claimed she was sketching and completely oblivious to her surroundings. 
Marie Antoinette was one of the last royals to live at the palace. She was executed in 1793 after the monarchy was abolished in 1792. Stephen Hawking in the Daily Mail explains how he thinks of time and time travel. Physicists have been thinking about tunnels in time too, but we come at it from a different angle. We wonder if portals to the past or future could ever be possible within the laws of nature. As it turns out, we think they are. What's more, we've even given them a name, wormholes. The truth is that wormholes are all around us, only they are too small to see. Wormholes are very tiny, they occur in nooks and cracks and crannies in space and time. You might find it a tough concept, but stay with me. Nothing is flat or solid. If you look closely enough at anything, you will find holes and wrinkles in it. It's a basic physical principle, and it even applies to time. Even something as smooth as a pool, ball, as tiny crevices, wrinkles and voids. Now it's easy to show that this is true in the first three dimensions, but trust me, it's also true of the fourth dimension. There are tiny crevices, wrinkles and voids in time. Down at the smallest of the scales, smaller than even the molecules, smaller than the atoms we get to a place called the quantum foam. This is where wormholes exist. Tiny tunnels or shortcuts through space and time consistently form, disappear and reform within this quantum world. And they actually link two separate places and two different times. Unfortunately, these real life time tunnels are just a billion trillionth trillionths of a centimetre across. Way too small for humans to pass through, but here's where the notion of wormhole time machines is leading. Some scientists think it might be possible to capture a wormhole and enlarge it trillions of times to make it big enough for a human or even a spaceship to enter. Given enough power and advanced technology, perhaps a giant wormhole could be constructed in space. I'm not saying it could be done, but if it could be, it would be a remarkable device. One end could be here near Earth, and the other end far, far away, near some distant planet. Theatrically, a time tunnel or wormhole could do even more than take us to other planets. If both ends were at the same place and separated by time instead of distance, the ship could fly in and come out still near Earth, but in the distant past. Maybe dinosaurs would witness the ship coming in for a landing. Despite this belief in wormholes, Stephen Hawking claims he believes they probably could not be used in time travel due to the grandfather paradox. The grandfather paradox explains that a person that travels to the past and kills his own grandfather has prevented the existence of his father or mother and therefore their own existence and therefore they could not have travelled to the past and killed his grandfather. Others claim that these wormholes could lead to an alternate reality that appears to be our past and we are therefore completely unable to alter events with what we would consider our reality. Stephen Hawking adds, this does not make time travel impossible. I do believe in time travel. Time travel to the future. Time flows like a river. And it seems as if each of us is carried relentlessly along 
by time's current. But time is like a river in another way. It flows at a different speed in different places. That is the key to travelling to the future. The idea was first proposed by Albert Einstein 100 years ago. He realised that there should be places where time slowed down and other places where time speeds up. He was absolutely right and the proof is right above our heads up in space. This is the Global Positioning System or GPS. A network of satellites is in orbit around Earth. The satellites make satellite navigation possible but they also reveal that time runs faster in space than it does down on Earth. Inside each spacecraft is a very precise clock but despite being so accurate they all gain around one third of a billionth of a second every day. The system has to correct for the drift otherwise that tiny difference would upset the whole system causing every GPS device on earth to go out by about six miles a day. You can just imagine the mayhem that that would cause. The problem doesn't lie within the clocks, they run fast because time itself runs faster in space than what it does down below. The reason for this extraordinary effect is the mass of Earth. Einstein realised that matter drags on time and slows it down like the slow of a river. The heavier the objects, the more it drags on time. And this startling reality is what opens the door to the possibility of time travel to the future. Right at the centre of the Milky Way galaxy, 26,000 light years away from us, lies the heaviest object in the galaxy. It's a supermassive black hole containing the mass of 4 million suns, crushed down to a single point by its own gravity. The closer you get to the black hole, the stronger the gravity. Get really close and not even light can escape. A black hole like this one has a dramatic effect on time, slowing it down far more than anything else in the galaxy. That makes it a natural time machine. The Large Hadron Collider is the world's largest and most powerful particle collider, the most complex experimental facility ever built and the largest single machine in the world. On the 1st of November 2009, an Oberworld Airbus flown by Air Comet, which was ready to begin its descent to Santa Cruz, Bolivia, found itself instantly and mysteriously over the skies of Santa Cruz in Tenerife, Spain, over 5,500 miles away. One day later, CERN lost power at the Large Hadron Collider and announced some days later in a statement that a bird had dropped a piece of baguette onto the machinery causing the slowdown. Some people did not believe their explanation for the closure and claim that maybe the event on the plane and the closure of the Large Hadron Collider were connected. An interesting story circulating the internet at the moment claims in July 1954 a man arrived at Tokyo airport in Japan. He's of Caucasian appearance and the officials are suspicious. Upon checking his passport they see that he hails from a country called Tered. The passport looks genuine except for the fact that there is no such country. The man is interrogated and asked to point out where his country is on the map. He immediately points his finger towards Andorra. 
but becomes angry and confused when he's never heard of Andorra and can't understand why his homeland of Tered isn't there. According to him, it should have been there before it had existed for more than 1,000 years. Custom officials found him in possession of money from several different European currencies and according to some reports, even unknown currencies. His passport was stamped by many airports around the globe, including previous visits to Tokyo. Baffled, they took him to a local hotel and placed him in a room with two guards outside until they could get to the bottom of the mystery. The company he claimed to work for had no knowledge of him. Although he had copious amounts of documentation to prove his point, the hotel he claimed a reservation for had never heard of him either. Officials in Tokyo he was supposedly there to do business with had also never heard of him. Later, when the hotel room he was holding was opened, the man and all his belongings had disappeared. The police established that he could not have escaped out of the window because the window was several floors up and there was no balcony. It was never seen again. Nobody knows for certain if this is even a factual account as there are no documents or newspaper clippings from the story that are known to exist. Its only mention comes in a couple of books, one of which was written by Colin Wilson and John Grant. The following story does have newspaper reports and was widely reported by the mainstream media. On the 28th of January 2003, Andrew Carlson was arrested and detained inside a trading at Wall Street. Over a two week period in the stock market, Andrew went from having $800 to making $350 million. It's like whatever he invested in turned into gold. He was arrested by the police on the allegation that he must have had illegal inside information. But when asked why and how he did it, the police were not expecting the answer that Andrew given. He claimed to be a man from the year 2056. He claimed to have been armed with knowledge about stock market information that he had brought with him from the future. He is also said to have predicted the exact date of the US invasion of Iraq. The police failed to take him serious and he was released on bail which was paid for by an anonymous source and was never seen again. Could he have been telling the truth? Could these people have come from a different time or even a different reality? To answer the question, the first question we should ask is what is reality? Niels Bohr, a Danish physicist who made significant contributions to understanding atomic structure and quantum theory, once said, if quantum mechanics hasn't profoundly shocked you, you haven't understood it. Quantum physics has left scientists all over the world baffled, especially with the discovery that our physical material reality isn't really physical at all. Everything we call real is made of things that cannot be regarded as real. Nikhil Tesla described our reality like this. The human being is a self-propelled automation entirely under the control of external influences. Willful and predetermined though they appear, his actions are not governed from within but from without. He is like a float being tossed around by the waves of a turbulent sea. Every living being is an engine geared to the wheel work of the universe. Though seemingly affected by only his immediate surroundings, the sphere of external influence extends to infinite distance.
Most scientists believe that we are made of cells, and cells are made of atoms. More specifically, cells are structures made up of billions of molecules, and each molecule is composed of atoms. In turn, atoms are comprised of subatomic particles called protons, electrons, and neutrons. And those are made of even smaller particles called quarks. Atoms have been observed passing through solid objects in a process called quantum tunneling. In 2012, Sergio Roche and David J. Wineland were jointly awarded the 2012 Nobel Prize for Physics for groundbreaking experimental methods that enable measuring and manipulation of individual quantum systems. They prove the correctness of the bizarre properties of quantum mechanics that electrons and atoms can be in two places at the same time. Some physicists claim this to be proof of alternate realities. If a single atom can be in multiple places at the same time and we're made of atoms, then does that mean that we can also be in multiple places at the same time? In a 1957 short called The Fly, which was the basis for the 1958 and 1986 sci-fi horror, a scientist working on a teleportation device encounters an unforeseen problem when he's testing his invention. Seth Brundle is a brilliant but eccentric scientist that has managed to build a teleportation machine, or as he calls them, telepods. Upon the creating the genius invention, Seth, falsely believing his girlfriend Veronica is rekindling a relationship with her ex, decides to test the machine on himself despite turning a baboon inside out in a previous test. He's completely unaware that a fly has entered the machine with him, but leaves the telepod seemingly as he entered. He believed that his invention and his test were a great success. Brundle begins to exhibit increased strength, stanima and sexual potency, which he believes is a result of the teleportation purifying his body. He also experiences side effects such as craving sugar. Unfortunately for him, he later discovers that his experiment was not the success he originally believed it to be. Brundle begins to deteriorate, losing body parts and becoming less human in appearance. He reconnects with Veronica and theorizes that he is becoming a Brundle fly, a hybrid human and insect. He has begun vomiting digestive enzymes onto his food to dissolve it and he gained the ability to cling to walls and ceilings. He realizes he is losing much of his human reason and compassion. He is now driven by primitive impulses that he cannot control. He ultimately ends up begging Veronica to kill him and she complies. The Fly is another classic fictional tale of science going too far and ultimately destroying its creator. Entertaining as these movies are, are they sometimes looking at things on a small scale? Rather than technology killing its creator, could this technology one day have irreversible effects on mankind or even completely destroy mankind? Teleportation abilities are also claimed by many online to exist, as well as invisibility cloaks, anti-gravity technology and many other scientific advances that we the public are not informed about. Some people believe that the most incredible and most potentially dangerous scientific advancement is also the most provable. On the 5th of December 2013, Nelson Mandela died. About three years before he died, 
in 2010, blogger Fiona Broom coined the term the Mandela Effect to describe a collective false memory she discovered at the Dragon Con convention where many people, including herself, believed that former South African President Nelson Mandela died during his imprisonment in the 1980s. She explains, I thought Nelson Mandela died in prison. I thought I remembered it clearly, complete with news clips of his funeral, the mourning in South Africa, the rioting in the cities and a heartfelt speech by his widow. Then I found out he was still alive. Upon Fiamma Broom noticing this, she began blogging about what she called the Mandela Effect. Since then, the internet is filled with new examples of the Mandela Effect. But what is the Mandela Effect? The Mandela Effect is when a large group of people remember things differently to how they actually happened. Many examples come from movies, books and even corporate logos. Believers in the Mandela Effect claim that certain events are actually different now to what they were when they were originally created. These differences are slight. For example, many people believe the witch from The Wizard of Oz to have shouted fly my pretties fly when she sent out a flying monkeys to capture Dorothy. She actually shouted fly fly fly. 
there is a similar example in Star Wars. To the shock of many, the famous Star Vader line, Luke, I am your father, is not actually Luke, I am your father, but no, I am your father. The Simpsons parodied both of these scenes, and on both occasions the Simpsons used the wrong lines. In one episode of The Simpsons, Mr. Burns lets out his flying monkeys and shouts out what millions of people believe to be the correct Wizard of Oz line, Fly my pretty fly, as opposed to the actual line, Fly, fly, fly. Believers in the Mandela Effect claim The Simpsons is full of examples of the Mandela Effect, and on nearly every occasion, the Simpsons uses what millions of people believe or remember to be the correct line, but in actuality, the incorrect line. There are literally millions of people that claim to have these false memories and explanations to what is going on vary from people remembering things incorrectly to scientists at CERN somehow altering or even putting us into a slightly different reality. Explanations to why CERN might have done this also range massively. Some claim that they may be attempting time travel after Earth was destroyed in a major war. Others claim that it could just be a mistake. Whatever the reason, many people online believe CERN are dangerously playing with the unknown when it comes to the Large Hydrant Collider. In the preface of a new book called Starmus, a collection of lectures given by famous scientists and astronomers, Stephen Hawking wrote, the Higgs potential has a worrisome feature that it might become metastable at energies above 100 billion giga electric volts. This could mean that the universe could undergo a catastrophic vacuum decay with a bubble of the true vacuum expanding at the speed of light. This could happen at any time and we wouldn't even see it. He also points out that an accelerator that reaches 100 billion giga electron volts would need to be larger than Earth and therefore is unlikely to be funded in the present economic climate. If Stephen Hawking believes that a large hadron collider the size of Earth could be catastrophic to the whole universe, then you would probably think a nearly 17 mile large hadron collider could easily be catastrophic to Earth. To suggest it could have unexpected or unexplained results is not really that far-fetched. What kind of reality could they have potentially moved us into? If the Mandela effect is true or caused by CERN, what kind of reality could they potentially have moved us into? If they keep doing it, could they move us into realities that become more and more different and strange? Could the reality shift potentially make it easier for strange creatures or entities to share and affect our reality? Many claim that CERN should stop doing what they are doing for the safety of us all, but could it already be too late?